10 minutes on technology and change. Ten minutes on technology and change. I think I really needed to talk about technology in this course because, let's face it, the way in which um, your living case organisation is being propelled is entirely down to the, the radical changes in the, the environment uh, around the technology that's uh, prevalent for the way that we'll do, we'll do business today and indeed in the future. So technology and change seem to be deeply embedded. Certainly, if we, you look at the newspapers, then you'll find, no matter where you look, some uh, articles which reflect this idea of technology being the drivers as being something that we're impelled to do, we're obligated to do, we are pre it's predetermined that we will do technology and change. And this idea, this, this gives us a re relatively deterministic idea of what, what technology will do to organisations. Technological determinism is a is a, a school of thought which goes uh, a way back in history, certainly through into the, uh, the period of invention in the late 19th century. And it's been critiqued because, let's face it, the idea that technology will be adopted and applied in a particular way is one that is we can understand, perhaps, in terms of seeing uh, ideas and technologies come to the surface, but it doesn't necessarily stand up. Uh, through all of its uh, through its many tentacles, so it's, it is the idea of technology uh, being something that's available and therefore it must be implemented, and that will mean that particular applications and particular processes will be followed, that certain controls will be in place and transactions will be done in a particular way. So, it, there's one at one level you can see that yes technology will have all of those implications. But another, you've got to say that if it was true that technologically truly determined, then all organisations would do things exactly the same way, and palpably they don't. So there is a question of whether technological determinism is truly descriptive of what uh, of a relationship between technology and organisation. And that's again some of the questions that I, raised with, uh, I would raise with India. Is technology immutable? You know, in other words, can can we not make difference in there? Do, do we not have choice? If technology determines what we're doing, where does competitive advantage come from? Uh, why would something be strategic if that's just what we are going to do? If everybody's going to end up doing. So we want to really understand how the individual and the organisation shapes technological practice. That brings us into the area of what they call social material practice. The idea that materiality, the technologies that we have, are embedded within the, the context, the material context of what's being done, and the social context of what's being done. And it's only that relationship and that folding between the social, the material, and the technical is how the whole project of technology unfolds within, within there. And that means that when we are looking at technology and change, it's not simply about looking at what is the technology and therefore what will happen. It's also about looking at well, what culture does it sit within it? Within it, how is technology understood? What is the, What are the aims and the the evolving understandings of what technology can do for it? So there's going to be tensions between what is and what is possible and what should be done within these periods of change. Now, I would point out that actually those tensions within there between what should be and what is is, is, is a, a, an engine for episodic change. I .e. Typically, with technological change, we have a technology, we run along for a certain period of time, and then as technology moves on, it drives us to the position of understanding that something must be done. And that leads us into a position of episodic change, and it's episodic change in which Orlikowski and Hoffman argue we improvise. So at some point we wander along with technology, we start developing it and moving on, we become aware of a gap of something that needs to be addressed, and then we anticipate that something will change and work towards making those changes. That takes us into a new position for, for change. And that's fairly uh, reflective, and it's something you can see within Ivorov's uh, case of Ericsson's implementation. 
it is pretty interesting, at least as far as accounting actually gets interesting. Uh, what they were trying to do there was they were implementing an ERP-based, an enterprise resource planning implementation of a financial module. And the financial module was going to fit all the way across the world. It wasn't going to just be in one depot or one, one area, of one country. It was going to be global. And we were going to move from like 100 local systems through to being gl global distributed shared service centres. At some level, when you narrate it like that, it sounds like it's going to be relatively deterministic because we are going to have one set of processes in, I think it was five or six different areas of the, of the world, but they will be common. They will be done the same way, no matter where the organisation is. Now, that's, that's fine to talk about in terms of that level, but it actually just implies a, a hell of a lot of uh, implementation work to try and get to that point of, of commonality. And certainly when they looked, uh, if you, you, when you read the article, you'll find that Ericsson's culture at that stage was very much about uh, local variations, about um, low accountability and transparable, uh, transparency, because people were looking to be innovative and therefore were trying to subvert the system. So there was loads of implications culturally and loads of implications organisationally. So what the uh, Ivorov did was to follow this over 18 months and to ask well, what were they doing to manage the processes of those dynamic, the, the dynamics that that might have thrown up. And, and what he came up with really is um, four areas of, of success activities. He said that there was an awful lot of um, uh, work to establish common ground of, yes, this is what we are trying to do, this is what that trying to that that what we are trying to achieve will mean. What does that? How do we commonly understand what was going on there? So that kind of common ground stuff is is really coming back to the the, the drawing board to say, okay, just remember what was the plan? Where were we going? Uh, at some level, it would equate into um, vision statement, but it's far more um, about trying to ensure that people have the the same kind of message. So it's far more. Um, communicative as part of that communication um, but also to try and get over the barriers between local variations and between technical and, and business they, he found there was a lot of activities round about establishing common meaning uh, as we all know words can mean different things in different contexts and different processes can equally be interpreted in different ways depending on where the implementation is so there was a whole bundle of activities around about establishing common meaning about what was to be done. Some of those informal, many of those formal through things like documentations and meetings. And there was, at that level, because of those uh, emergent local variations, there was a great deal of debate on uh, common interests to make sure that actually when it comes down to it, we're all trying to do the same type of thing. Here, there was a, an amount of political wrangling, of, uh, there was an amount of negotiating going on within there, some degree of politicking, particularly as we moved, they moved forward and looked at the details of what the, the processes were going to be. And once those processes started to come into place, there was uh, moves to stabilise, to establish common behaviour. Uh, and although they talked about uh, KPIs within there, uh, it comes down to, in a lot, large case, of a, a lot of good old-fashioned management of ensuring that actually what is we, we said will be done will be uh, embedded and continued. Now, I would challenge you at this stage to go back and look at the Ericsson Cisco partnership videos. We don't necessarily have any um, uh, evidence of common behaviour, but if you go back and you look at the, the watch the videos again, they're only a couple of minutes long, then think about what these people are saying. And I think what you'll see within the, the chief executives is there are a lot of common ground talking uh, and they've spent a lot of time doing that stuff. And it becomes less certain when you start to look at the, the marketing executives because they, they, they are charged with looking at common interests and common, uh, and common practices and it's a little bit more sticky when you get to, to that stage. And you might reflect while you're doing that on whether those are something that you see within Aviva. Uh, certainly when I look at the case, then what I'm trying to look at is to see what is the relationship between the business and the strategy end, the local practices that what people do, and the role that technology plays in that. 
And it's quite clear that they're committed very much to the idea of digital transformation. It's a huge kind of discourse, both in the insurance industry, but also for the organisation. So that, that's very much in the heart and driving through this is the, 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 the commitment of the organisation. The business aspect of that comes through and uh, translates into saying we're trying to build this true customer composite, therefore, which is a, a gateway to getting greater access to people and therefore to getting uh, greater levels of profit from them. But there's also that um, uh, that move through into the, the technologies themselves of we will do this by offering my Viva, a Viva, and to having the background to that aligned processes. So there's a real transformation and equalization between the two of them. A technology, let's not say that technology is simply about infecting the, the, the day-to-day running. It's really interesting that what they've done within there is to try and ensure that you've got um, a, a degree of localness through systems thinking, innovation, and involvement in the implementation. But at the same time, technology has seen something that's that's other from the business. So the, the establishing of the, digi- the, the digital garage is important to provide the um, signification to people that the technology's role is going to be something that's familiar, but also something that's completely unfamiliar.